So what is the national interest waiver? It's a type of green card based on employment that allows someone to remain in the U.S. because their presence will substantially benefit the national interest. That's what it is. Hello and welcome to another edition of What It Is, a place where we talk about the ways U.S. immigration laws affect everybody. Today, we're going to answer the question, what is the National Interest Waiver? Hi, I'm Michael Ruddle, immigration attorney and founder at Ruddle Law PC based in Torrance, California, where we practice immigration law in all 50 states. The National Interest Waiver technically falls under what's called the EB2 category for green cards, which are reserved for aliens with advanced degrees like a master's degree or higher, and aliens of exceptional ability. So before even looking at whether your work will benefit the national interest, applicants must first satisfy that requirement. Assuming that requirement is met, there are three additional requirements that must be satisfied in order to qualify under the National Interest Waiver. The first requirement is that the job itself must have substantial merit and national importance. What does that mean exactly? Well, it's not limited just to military or education or medicine, but can be shown in a range of areas such as business, entrepreneurialism, science, technology, culture like art, music, health, or education. The second requirement is that the applicant must be well positioned to advance the endeavor. So that means that the applicant must be able to do the job they're applying for and factors the government looks at are the individual's education, their skills, their knowledge, their record of success in this field or something similar. What are the plans for future activities with this job or in this field? Have you made any progress toward achieving the ultimate goal in this field? And what is the interest of potential customers, users, investors, or other relevant entities or individuals? Third requirement for the National Interest Waiver is that on balance, you must show that the waiver is beneficial to the United States. For this requirement, it's important to understand what exactly is being waived with the National Interest Waiver. So the two things that are being waived with these cases are the labor certification, where you must show there's no US workers available, and the second is the job offer itself. This third requirement is by far the most challenging aspect of these cases to satisfy, especially considering that national interest is not explicitly defined under US immigration laws. Factors the government will consider for this requirement are whether there's a sense of urgency in a specific case, whether the U.S. could still benefit from the applicant's contributions even if there are several U.S. workers available to do the job. And whether the applicant's qualifications are so unique or complex that offering the job to U.S. workers would be impractical. At the end of the day, a national interest waiver application is determined case by case. There's also a specific process for national interest waivers uh, reserved exclusively for international medical graduates or in other words, doctors from other countries. Our firm has been successful with national interest waiver cases in a variety of industries, including business, education, science, technology, construction, and cybersecurity. If you have questions or wanna see if you qualify for the national interest waiver, contact an immigration attorney at Ruddle Law today to see if we can help you. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button, click that bell, Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on the ways U.S. immigration laws affect everyone. As for the National Interest Waiver, that's what it is. Until next time, I'm Attorney Michael Ruddle. Keep climbing that mountain.